All right. Well, thank you very much, Mark, for the introduction. Um, I also want to thank the entire IPC team for not only organizing but hosting this two-part event. I also want to thank Farm Fresh Media for completing part one of this two-part series. We are here tonight to look at the conclusion, or part two, of Focus, Measure, and Manage, improving your pharmacy's marketing and bottom line. My name is Mark Nelson. I'm a partner with Independent RX Consulting, and I will be the voice behind the slides for this evening's presentation. We are looking again at Focus, Measure, and Manage, improve your marketing and bottom line. This is part two of a two-part series. So if you've missed the first part, it's available for download at ipcrx.com and that was presented by Wayne with Farm Fresh Media. For the meet the speaker, I'll skip over this slide. So Mark was gracious enough to already provide me with an introduction so I can move past this, although it's available for download if anybody wants to read it later. Our agenda for this evening. First thing we want to do is obviously define our business goals. And you know, I've said this you know, time and time again, independent pharmacies are independent for a reason. So each and every one of you tonight or, or those of you listening later are going to have different goals. And that's the great thing about independent pharmacy is that's okay. We can still use the same tools to help you be successful. We're going to look at physician marketing and collaborative care. So this is one of the items that Wayne brought up in part one. We're going to look at patient-centric marketing. That was also one of the items brought up in part one. And we're going to look at maximizing the patient experience. I call this education, not sales. So it's important, I stress that, that we're not working on selling to our patients. We're working on educating our patients moving forward. So this was a slide that Wayne included in the first session, and you know, I really liked it, and it's why I kept it in the second, because you know it's the basic story of if you build it, they will come. And you know, whether you saw the first part or not, you know, everybody's pretty familiar with the story about the field of dreams. So a farmer builds a, a baseball field in, in the middle of nowhere and you know, hears this voice, you know, if you build it, they will come. And while that was true to some degree for pharmacy in the past, it isn't necessarily as true today. So case in point, now granted we can exclude COVID from this, but this is opening day of the brand new $1.2 billion Ranger Stadium here in Dallas, Texas. So it's proof that if you build it, they might not come or might can't come as well. So, you know, the game has changed a little bit and we have to focus on things such as marketing and SEO and, and all those fun things to make sure that if we build it, that they know about us is the key part. So I start this off with you know, the same thing that I ask just about every pharmacy when I go in for a consulting position. It's, you know, what are the 10 things that set you apart from your competition? I think 99% of pharmacists that I've talked to can, can rattle off at least four or five of these right off the top of their heads. Um, but I challenge you to go back, make a list, and truly come up with a solid 10 things that set you apart from your competition. And the reason we want to do this is because can we actually quantify those things? I might think it sets me apart, but does it? Well, the answer to that's actually in your pharmacy data. So you'll be able to find out. As a starting point, we want to simplify your marketing. We talk about the wise person built their house on a rock. Same thing goes with your marketing effort. So we want to start at the basics. And that's what these 10 items are. We want to write these down. We want to review them with your team. You think about every employee is an essentially an ambassador of your brand, uh, of your reputation, uh, of everything that, that you've created or that you've created as a team. So go over these with your employees and make sure that they understand them as well. Now, using these 10 items, we're gonna develop a 30 second commercial. So the goal of this is essentially come up with a, you know, I say quote unquote, an elevator pitch. If I walked onto an elevator with Mrs. Jones and she asked me about my pharmacy, what are the three things that I would talk about in the 30 seconds that I have to speak with her? Um, they might be different than what you would talk to 
Joe Smith down the street about. So everybody's going to fall somewhere in there. Um, a good example of this would be if you're talking to an elderly person and you talk about, you know, strip packaging and the synchronization and helping with Part D plan selection. So those things would be more appealing to the older population, perhaps. Um, there's always exceptions to that. Whereas the younger generation, I might talk more, more about the technology that we have and automation and the apps and the website, things that drive a, a younger generation. A lot of people will say, well, you know, most of my customers are older, and so I focus my marketing primarily to them. And while that's true, that you know, generally the majority of your customers or your profitable customers will be or can be older you also have a new generation coming up as well so while i don't per se get many scripts filled today you know in 20 years per se that might change certainly hope it doesn't but you want to market to me as well so the more you think about these things you're going to adjust that 30 second pitch based on who you're speaking with kind of like the example I gave you, you know, what are the benefits to that individual? What are their pain points or, or ask them what their frustrations with their current pharmacy are? And then you can go into your pitch from there. So the answers are already in your data. I stated that a few moments ago, but that's the key thing is that this whole presentation is pharmacy software agnostic to, um, for lack of a better term it's you all have this data it's just gonna be the process of knowing where to look and looking at what different criteria you have to search from so we're gonna run data on OTC sales we're gonna run data on prescriptions um, and then we'll look at a case study here as well so one of the pharmacies that I spoke with recently I asked them this same question you know what are the 10 things that set you apart the number one thing they said was we have social mar media, social marketing down. So case in point, you look at Grapevine Drug. So the first thing you see when you go to their website is a pop-up asking if you're looking for PPE. That was up within two days of a stay-at-home order being put in place for the first time during COVID um, in Tarrant County here in Dallas. Shortly after, they released free next day, no contact delivery. This is a new service, but two days after that order, they had already moved to no contact delivery and then continued to market those features such as offering synchronization so you can make less trips and so forth. So they said that their number one feature was social media and you can see that when you go to their website is they're all over Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, all great places and a lot of time free places that you can advertise. So we want to focus on delivering the right message to the right physicians. So one of the examples of this is if I want to do a mailer and I want to send a mailer out, let's say to a thousand people, you know, I should be including physicians in that group today. So Wayne talked in the last presentation about creating relationships with the doctors in your community and it couldn't be more important in today's market. So the collaborative care, working with physicians to truly benefit the patient in the long run. It's what I like to I joke and call it the Lion King circle of life, but it's true. It's, it benefits the pharmacy. It benefits my adherence numbers. It benefits the patients. It benefits the physicians. They get a more clear picture of this patient's overall health. So having the data in your system to run a simple report, who are my top doctors? And how do I get more prescriptions from them? Or do I send them a thank you card for the business that they've got given me thus far? But any pharmacy system can produce a list of here are the top prescribers over the last 90 days. This one is an example directly from one of our IRX dashboards. So if it doesn't look familiar, that's why. So now that we've defined the business differentiators and we've said these are the 10 things that we do different we need to go out and tell everyone so we just looked at marketing to the right physicians you know, how do i replicate the success i have with my profitable physicians why do they work with me look at those things ask them those questions ask them for referrals um, one of the best ways to do that is through some of the reports using the data in your pharmacy system to say you know hey dr so-and-so or dr smith for example you know i have 
10 of your patients that use my pharmacy. And here is a report that shows just some of the services that I provide these patients. And here's the impact on their quality of life and their health, their adherence scores, et cetera. So which physicians send me the most referrals? Which ones send me the best referrals? All of these are great places to start when we're talking about building new business. So here's a sample outreach report. So most of the pharmacy systems have a number of options available today. So one of the examples I've chose is a med synchronization patient agreement. So what I do here is I set the patient up on MedSync and go through my explanation of how it benefits them and so forth. I also match that with a letter to the physician. So I populate their most recent prescriber, or you can select the prescriber from the data and say, you know, Dr. So-and-so, here is why we are putting this person on a sync program. Here's how the program works. Make them aware of the services that you provide. This alone generally will bring back at least phone calls or or, or more questions, and more questions is also a good thing because it gives you the opportunity to speak with that person. And whether you have a great relationship or it's the first time you've talked with them, now you go back to what are the 10 things that set you apart and go from there. So here's another example of a patient adherence report card. So this one's broken down by therapeutic class, but it's an example of something you could show, send to a physician or, or show a physician weekly, monthly, you know, however often that you agree on and say, you know, Dr. Smith, again, here are the patients that you see that come to my pharmacy and here's their compliance ratings. So if we look at, you know, their average adherence scores, their latest adherence scores, their medians, um, how many days have gone past since they should have picked up a medication that they haven't. So this patient's doing pretty well for the most part. Um, and then we have that trending as well. So most of the physicians, when they see this, it's, it's a wow type light bulb moment. And I can say it, maybe it shouldn't be funny, but the most common response is, I didn't even know that this person took half of these items because, you know, Mrs. Smith goes to the ER for headaches on the weekends and so forth. And that doesn't get conveyed back to the GP. So it's another example of one of the reports that you can run for marketing to the doctors. So the right patients, the right message to the right physicians. We also want to deliver that message to the correct patients as well, or something similar. So we want to make sure that we capture the, how did you hear about us? So when we're going in and running these marketing campaigns, how do we measure if they work? Well, the answer is in your data, but this one's a little bit more tricky. So when you capture the, how did you hear about us with every new customer, you're gathering valuable information such as I heard about you on a podcast or a mailing or I got a phone call or my friend has this report that you provided for them and I'd like to get that report for me because my medication regimen is complicated as well. So all of those fields, you know, use independence to your advantage. Um, I, I joke and say like, you know, it's like the Titanic versus a speedboat. So you look at CVS, you look at, you know, the, the big box chains. And so when COVID came out as an example, you know, I'm sure everybody started getting to work on that. You know, these box chains, they've got million dollar marketing departments that tell them how to do things and, and how to react. The challenge is, you know, it takes a hundred people signing off to make that actually come to fruition. And even then it's a slow kind of staggered rollout. You know, the benefit to being independent is you're agile. You know, we can run a marketing campaign, measure it, and if it worked almost the way we wanted, we can make slight adjustments, or if it didn't work at all, we can change tomorrow. So we don't have a, a board of directors per se to, to run these things through. Um, you can try new things, you know, have masks, offer same day delivery, offer curbside pickup, all the things that are now trending, especially with COVID still in, in the process. So um, general communication and engagement options, options, um, mailers, social media, you know, what method will reach your target customers? So again, we can search the pharmacy system and say, show me the number of patients I've filled prescriptions for in the last 12 months that are over the age of 55 and send them a specific mailer. We can look at the same uh, 
search criteria, just change that to show me any of the patients that I've filled medications for who are under the age of 14 and enroll them in a antibiotic program. So one good example of this is I had a pharmacy that calls every patient's parents. So I say patient. So if they fill an antibiotic for a child within 48 hours, they call the patient's parents simply to see if they're feeling better. Um, the results of that were amazing. So we had a mother come back into the pharmacy and just excited that we weren't trying to sell them anything that we had generally called just to see if her son was feeling better. And she went to a, I think they call it a mommy and me message board, or maybe that was a specific name of one. And within weeks, we had 40 plus customers come in all as a result of that. So that was something that they didn't do simply for marketing, but it worked for fantastic marketing as well. And again, that's a really simple query in your system. How many patients that are under X age have I filled? And it doesn't have to be antibiotics. It can be any therapeutic class for within a set date range. And maybe we schedule a task just to call the patients themselves, see if they're feeling better. You know, make a post-it note, you know, write it down in, in a three-ring binder. Or if your system has automated uh, tasks in it, you can create a task and, and do it like that. But, um, you know, making sure that you communicate with your patients is also a really solid way to market. And again, we can use the data to tell us who to say what to essentially now when it comes to mailers versus social media so starting this presentation and we did some back and forth collaboration prior to you know i was thinking that for me being 36 you know mailers probably weren't going to be my preferred method of communication it's not how you necessarily deliver a message to me but social media on the other hand might be so you want to use a combination of, of the different options. So whether it's Google, website, you know, you're passing out flyers, attending local trade shows, sponsoring local events. That is a huge one as well. So the halftime show is brought to you by Mark Nelson's Independent Pharmacy, your locally owned independent pharmacy. Things like that make a difference. And we can actually measure those, especially when we ask them the question of, how did you hear about us? So when they come into the pharmacy and they're filling their first script, how'd you hear about us? Well, you sponsored the local football team, so I'm giving you my business. It happens all the time. So one of the other things we wanna look at too is, we wanna look at the data to see what trends are common in your most profitable patients. So you might have answered that you're passionate about diabetes. So I, I have a story about that. I got a pharmacist friend of mine who is just truly passionate about diabetes and extremely knowledgeable. Um, she's built a learning center onto her pharmacy, um, you know, doesn't miss any opportunity to provide value to these people and especially those who need it. So, you know, when you look at what she thinks she does really well, we wanna make sure that the numbers back that. So we look right now at your top patients. So we've got, um, you know, obviously it's all de-identified. So we've got patient number one, 31 scripts, 48% gross profit. Um, we got 48 scripts, 9.2% gross profit. So how do we get more people like patient number one? Well, it starts at what are the commonalities between patient number one and the other people in your system? Is patient number one a diabetic, like I mentioned earlier? Is patient number one um, an oncology patient? You know, what are the things that make them most like other people in your system? And use that data to market accordingly. We also look at the top brand drugs, top generic drugs. You can cross-reference, and I started this, I promise I've deleted more slides than I ended up keeping in the presentation, but you can drill down into this in very fine detail to see you know, which patients get the specific NDCs that are the most profitable, that are written by certain physicians, and again, the, the options are, are fairly limitless. Um, this is something that we can help you do, but again, it's all data that's in your system. So I guess if that's one takeaway that y'all have from this at all tonight is just knowing that you know, any of the ex examples are things that you can do. And if, if you don't know where to start, you know, we can certainly help you and um, we'd be more than happy to do so. But 
um, looking for your ideal patients, drugs, prescribers. It's all really simple searches in your pharmacy software. So this is one example of one system actually allows us to capture demographics. This is really useful because if I have a patient's height and a patient's weight and a patient's date of birth, there's certain things I can calculate. So if I was going to run a campaign and probably shouldn't run this, but you know, people who are maybe at risk for certain things, I can use these numbers to pinpoint that sector of patients. Now, if your software doesn't have, uh, so they're actually nice enough to add this in for me. If your software does not have a specific section, it doesn't mean don't capture it. So just because your point of sale doesn't have specific fields for you know, how they heard about you, put it in the notes. Make it something that you can review later because, again, we want to see if you're spending a lot of money on, on radio advertising and all of your patients are coming in because of this report that you do for one doctor, you know, we probably want to shift our focus and how do we do that report even better? How do we work with that doctor to get more patients as opposed to, uh, and we're not saying abandon any of them by any means, but it can help us kind of go on uh, what's the best starting point. So one of the things kind of to sum that section up, you have a lot of people that I'll talk to and they'll say, well, I want to start a compounding business to grow my pharmacy. Well, we can look at their dispensing patterns. We can look at the doctors in their area. And while that might be their passion and, and truly what they want to do, if we come back and say, well, it doesn't look like there's a high volume of, of compound scripts wrote in your general area, it doesn't mean don't do it. It's what two things can we make a big impact on right now and use those things to pay for moving into compound, which might be a little bit more of a risky or we might have to market a little bit more because it's a further radius and group of patients that we're trying to reach. So it'd be establishing new relationships and that takes time. So there's a lot of little things you can do quickly, such as, you know, adding in a sync program or um, speaking of sync, you know, a good example of that is when we talk about creating more time, if those of you that offer delivery go to the same location more than once in a month or, or more than once in a week and sometimes I've heard even more than once in a day you know a sync program can help alleviate a lot of that not every aspect but a whole lot of it so imagine if you had a driver that was going to these locations once a month or even once a week versus multiple times each week or each month you've got way more time to have somebody make these phone calls or to document these types of things as well. So, you know, that's just a good starting point. So if we free up some time there, um, every time we save 10 minutes in, in your workflow process by automating uh, anything in that you do, you know, 10 minutes might not seem like a lot, but 10 minutes here and, and 10 minutes there, now you've got an extra 20 minutes in the day. 20 minutes, that's two phone calls that are picking up the phone and calling a patient and just asking them how they're doing. Um, somebody that's on a sync program or that you do collaborative care or things like that with and asking them if they know anybody else that would benefit from the services that you provide. I mean, that I've never had a situation where there's somebody who's happy with my service that wasn't willing to say, oh yeah, I have so-and-so that would be a perfect candidate for for everything you do and they post it on message boards you know people that you know have these certain ailments you know they they stay in touch and there's communities facebook etc so making sure that you you know talk to the patients is important as well so we want to cross educate our customers and this is where i said on that initial agenda um, it's not sales it's education and i'll use probably the most basic of examples. So if I fill a statin, you know, you recommend a CoQ10. So all of us are familiar with that, but are we doing it? And who should be doing it? So we know that there's a 90% higher success rate when the pharmacist or somebody of quote perceived authority makes that recommendation. And it's not because, you know, a pharmacy tech or a cashier can't do it. It's just generally they're not empowered with the degree of, of knowledge that a pharmacist would have to educate that, you know, hey, Mr. Nelson, if you take this supplement, it mitigates these side effects or helps with these other areas. You know, I, the struggle, I think, for a lot of pharmacies is that, 
you know, pharmacists by nature are, you know, servants. You know, you get into this business to help people. Um, I don't think anybody started a pharmacy because they planned on being a billionaire, but you definitely all started with the idea of helping people and, and making a good living at the same time. And that is what essentially we are doing in this process. So when we educate the customers on supplements and, and other things like that, we're not selling them. Um, and again, it's, it's counterintuitive when you're a servant or a healer, you know, trying to, you get that idea of walking around throwing things in their cart before they check out. And, and it's not that it's making sure you make the right recommendations to the right customers for the right reasons. And that's education. That's being a healthcare provider. That's not sales. Now it's, you know, technically, I guess we can classify it in, in the sales, but it benefits the patient first and foremost, it benefits the pharmacy, the doctor benefits. It's a win-win for everybody involved. I talked earlier about capturing the, how did you hear from us? Well, loyalty programs. So whether that's integrated into your pharmacy software, or it's something that you use a third party program for, or it's a dry erase board or a post-it note, Tracking patient sales and loyalty gives us a whole lot of information. We can track loyalty programs based on zip codes. So we can run reports later and see the data that says, hey, of all the OTC sales that I had last week, 90% of them came from this zip code. Now, if that's not a zip code you've marketed to lately, you might want to add that to the list. If you're putting all your efforts into one area and seeing things come in from another, what are we doing right that we haven't noticed yet? And how do we replicate that going forward into the other sectors? So loyalty programs can be a great way of doing this because they gather data. They track sales. You'll know if Mark Nelson comes to your pharmacy every single Thursday and gets a Snickers bar and a Coke. Now, um, I joke with my wife because she's got a keychain that I, I couldn't fit in my pocket if I tried. It's got about 200 of these little plastic things on there, and you know she'll siphon through them or spin through them while uh, while we're at the checkout. I just give them her phone number, and just like that, the pharmacy now knows what Mark Nelson likes to do on this Thursday. If we run that report again and see a trend, we know that we can market to that. Now, might be a bad example for something to market to, but you know, if I'm a diabetic, you might educate me on the reasons I probably shouldn't be buying those things each Thursday when I come to the pharmacy. Um, we want to talk about value added services. So when you have your patients in the pharmacy, you know, make sure they're aware of the things that you provide. You know, do you have delivery and the patient's telling you, and we had this situation a couple weeks ago, um, patient walked into one of the pharmacies I was working in and specifically made it a point to say that they, they apologized because they had missed their pickup date, but there's some issues with logistics and, and getting to the pharmacy is just being diff is getting difficult for them. And you know, the pharmacy just carried on with the conversation. Now, luckily we were there to go back and say, Hey, does this person know that we have delivery? And you know, I don't think they do. So went and got the customer and said, you know, for the record, you know, we can provide a delivery service. We can synchronize your medications and do all of these, you know, next things. And the customer was blown away and they didn't even expect it. And so while that seems kind of trivial to, to, to you or me, it's, you gotta understand that, you know, today people don't necessarily expect that you're going to go above and beyond. Those are the things that set you apart, but you have to make sure that you get that message out there. So, you know, take the time to make sure they're aware of the options that you have. So if you've got a new app, when you have a customer come in, ask them if they've used it or have they checked it out yet, get their feedback. Um, use data to view commonalities in your best customers. So I mentioned that earlier, you know, what are the things that each of my top customers have in common? You know, am I looking at a lot of athletes, for instance, and I use this example because it came up um, actually this morning where I had a pharmacy that was using their pass for strip packaging medication supplement and not medication, but just supplements in general while they were building their MedSync program. So, you know, that was an alternate option and they marketed it to local gyms. They marketed it to um, physicians that, you know, e even I'm a perfect example of that. You know, I take two or three multivitamins every morning. My wife sets them out for me on my, uh, you know, sink counter. Well, if I could have them strip package, 
that would be appealing to even me. So somebody who we talked about at the beginning might not have been interested in, you know, strip packaging and, and med sync because I don't take a lot of medications, but I do take vitamins. And so if you can make that easier, you know, now I'm listening. So another thing that's important is recognizing your top patients. Now, whether that's a feature that is located in your software or that's something that, again, you do on the side, you know, it can be extremely valuable. Um, in my previous role, I managed employees who would they'd get to choose where they wanted to stay when they were going on site to visit a customer. And I had people that would drive 20 minutes further, wake up 20 minutes earlier in the morning because they wanted to stay at a specific chain of hotels where they had more points. Now, these are not the Waldorf Astorias by any means. So this is, you know, simple things like, you know, it meant something that when they walked in and when they travel a lot, that they're greeted by their first name or that they're handed a bottle of water or back in the day, somebody would come out from behind the desk and, and shake their hand. So recognizing who your top patients are is extremely important. So one um, slide I've got here, sorry, I skipped through it. Um, so one slide I've got here um, has the ability, and there are a couple systems that do. Um, with this one, I'm using a Pioneer example. And what this does is it actually shows us how the system is calculating a patient's profitability. So this is a gold patient, which means they comprise the top 5% of patients whose scripts and OTC purchases contribute to my overall profit. Now, I can tell you, I definitely don't want this patient having a bad experience and transferring out. How many of the next level down do I need to make up for that patient that just transferred out? So, you know, making sure that, you know, if you have this functionality, and again, there's several systems that do, you know, putting an alert on the pharmacist check station that when a gold person walks into the pharmacy or, you know, or any patient, honestly, so I'm not trying to single out anybody in particular, but, you know, if a gold patient comes in, you know, just making sure that you, you look up and, and recognize them and thank them for their business. And if you get fancy with the technology, you can have that be a pop up directly on your screen. So you don't even have to look up and you can just say, you know, hey, Mrs. Jones, how's it going? I'll be with you in just a second. And, and they're blown away that you remember their name without even looking up. So this is important. Um, the other thing that I wanted to hit on here really quick is when we're looking at the data and it shows us who our negative patients are, you know, pretty much the running joke anytime I've ever shown this or talked about it is, well, that's a list of the people that we transfer to one of the box chains. Um, and it can be because these people are negative, negatively affecting your profit. Uh, these are also the easiest patients to turn around more often than not. So these are typically people with complicated medication regimens that something like a CRM and a sync program or, um, you know, a couple of visits and, and sit downs, and you can turn that around really quickly as well. So I wouldn't write them off just yet. Um, here are some other fields that I use to look for. Where do I start? And that's one of the big things too is, you know, if I wanted to build a collaborative care or a clinical or med sync program, you know, where do I even begin? Well, you know, numerous systems have hundreds of different search criteria. One of the places I start is I look for people who aren't already enrolled in sync. I look for people who are part D primary, and then I look for people that are taking between two and 10. In this example, I used priority therapeutic class count medications. It's a mouthful. Um, but you can just Show me any patient that takes more than five medications every single month that's not on a sync program and see what those results are. That's a great list to start marketing a potential sync program to. Um, if I ran this report, and again, I use all of these from you know real life experience, and I ran this with a pharmacist and we the results came back with about a thousand people. And she looked at it and she said, thousand people. I had no idea that I had that many people getting more than five scripts every single month. I'm going to start that tomorrow. I'll have to think about that overnight. And that is uh, the, the first kind of failure right there. Now I'm being funny with it, but you know, I said, let's take that and, and break it down into smaller, more easily achieved goals, I think is the best way to do it. So we just put a simple filter of, of any of those patients are any not taking an ACE ARB when they should to be. And that brought our results down to five. Now, I didn't save that screenshot, but 
we went from a thousand people to five. Now five, that definitely seems doable. So five patients that I can call and explain the benefits of taking this added item, um, five physicians that I can call. There's reports in a number of systems where I can click a button that says, send this report to the following physician, either directly through the system or you print it and fax it or email, however you want to deliver it. But this is an action item. So I'm not making a cold call to this physician, even if I've never talked to them before. I'm calling for a reason. They have a patient who would be better suited or maybe not. We don't know yet because the doctor might have additional details, which we would then notate in our software to say, yeah, they're not taking it for this reason, but at least we know we've got better data. The other four, now we have a reason to talk to them. So you can put any number of search criteria in to start with whatever group of patients you think works best. Now, I included this slide. We've used this before in one of our boot camps, but I wanted to throw it in here just because these are going to be available for you later um, for download. But um, how to offset negative sales trends. I use this one more because these are a lot of the things that I hear on a daily basis. So, you know, I spend a large portion of my day talking to pharmacies that you know, are already in operation and, and consulting on best practices and, and helping them implement new techniques and technologies, things like that. Um, you know, you hear, you know, I don't have enough patience. Well, not enough patience means we need to create better relationships from a marketing standpoint. And that's where it goes back to the physicians or marketing to new patients in areas that we're not getting a lot from currently. Not enough RX, uh, sorry, not enough scripts per patient. Well, MedSync, refill reminders, things like that. We can increase 2.7 fills per script per patient per year. Um, shift from brand to generic. We'll look at purchasing. So, you know, any one of the objections that I've had in at least in the last 90 days have been easily countered by, you know, yeah, you know, if you're in an area where the population is a thousand and you're already servicing 50%, and this is, again, is a specific example. Um, you know, they said, well, I already service 50% of this whole area. So what else can I do? Well, wouldn't you love a hundred percent? Now that might not be realistic, but 55%, 60%, those numbers are. So, you know, just because you have a, a small population doesn't limit you. Um, again, we can go into making more money per patient by educating them and, and helping them while at the same time helping us, um, marketing different. So there's a number of things that we can do to offset these trends. So a couple of key takeaways we want to have tonight. So focus local um, and then focus on your strengths so the first thing i said leading into this was you know make a list what are the 10 things that that you do best what sets you apart what are you passionate about and focus on those you know focus local you know market to you know uh, i saw a pharmacy the other week and this is just another example for y'all to potentially use that instead of the patients using their loyalty points to you know get percentage off on OTC purchases or when you hit certain points you get five dollars off or however you want to do it they did a competition where they donated all of them to a local high school football booster club or to a local church you could basically choose the charity of your choice from you know a list that they had that were local and you could donate your points to them now the interesting thing with this is you talk to people or I talk to pharmacists who say, you know, they're 15 miles away. You know, there's a couple options between me and, and that customer, for instance. Um, that one marketing campaign, they had people drive across town that said, oh, we're transferring over here because we support this team and y'all support this team. So we want to support you supporting them. So things like that make a difference. Um, putting up signs that uh, I have a pharmacist who their marquee in the front of the pharmacy said hometown pharmacist and we actually smile here. Um, that one got more laughs than uh, you know anything else that I've seen, but it worked. Um, you know he opened up right beside at Walgreens and right near a Walmart. Yeah, and, and was nervous doing so. Um, you know, I told him then again, I didn't invent this by any means that, you know, they have, again, million dollar marketing departments that tell them specifically, they have the data that tells them where to put pharmacies. 
So you can borrow from them in those situations. And, you know, that pharmacist, you know, over 80% of his scripts today are initially transfers from the chains that were around him. So, you know, just saying different things um, can attract attention as well. You know, have a digital commitment, have Facebook, have LinkedIn, have, uh, I guess we could throw TikTok on there nowadays. Um, but having a presence on these um, reaches new audiences. So it's important to make sure that you're visible in these areas. Um, you know, Facebook, it's, it's really neat how you can track who sees what. And, you know, people that don't even necessarily follow your pharmacy today have the ability to see, you know, what you've posted because a mutual friend likes that post, for instance. So there's all kinds of ways to get that message out. And we want to leverage the data. So, again, I've just given a number of suggestions in here. Um, and the key thing is that the data to back all of these is going to be in your software. So, again, whether you do that or you have us help you do that, um, that information is there and it's available. So use it to your advantage, you know, market to the right physicians, market to the right patients, you know, might not be the thing that you thought was your strongest, but we can use that small adjustment to pay for the thing that we thought was and want to be our strongest area. So, you know, the data tells us exactly where to start and how to pay for it at the same time. And we also want to focus on strategy first, then tactics. So um, it is, um, you know, not a good idea, obviously, to go out there with this marketing blitzkrieg and then think about how are we going to track this or measure this later. So again, have that in place. Make sure that you convey that message with your team, that you put things in place that when a new customer comes in, we ask them how they heard about us. When a new customer comes in, you know, in addition to that, have the pharmacist or, or PIC or, or somebody introduce themselves and, and offer to tour the pharmacy or, or just to talk to them more about some of the services that you provide. You know, little things like that go a long way. And, you know, from someone who sees that firsthand, you know, day in and day out, you know, it's the look on people's faces when you do this is, is one of the reasons that we all do what we do. Um, you know, I had a pharmacist come from behind the counter to introduce herself to a new patient and then just basically offered to give a tour and here's where we do compound. So if you have any compound medications, we can fill those here and you know, here's our OTC section, et cetera. If you have anything you want custom ordered from you know, local companies, this is where we do that. We also provide an app. If you need help, I can set that up for you. If you have loved ones and you know, this is almost direct quote. And she said, you know, and, and if you don't need help, but maybe you know somebody who does, we're happy to do that for them as well. And, and the patient was just, they looked flabbergasted in a good way because they're just not used to it. And that's exactly what she said. She said, when I came in, I expected to get a prescription. I didn't expect to make a friend. So, and thanked the pharmacist for taking that time to speak with her. So those things are important. So you, you create a strategy and develop a plan and when we initiate a marketing campaign, then we can measure it and see, did that work? Um, if it didn't, let's make adjustments and try again. But moving to the final point is you got to think about the long term. Success takes time. So you're not necessarily going to hit a home run out of the park on every single one. So I'll tie it back to the field of dreams picture from the start. Um, it, it takes time and it, it's not failure it's identifying the ways that didn't work um, and i know i borrowed that quote as well but you know you, every time you run one of these campaigns you can learn from that the data will tell you things that we can use to adjust it and make it all the more effective next time so think invest in the long term take time it, success takes time and just don't stop continue making it a march whether it's a post on facebook every day or a post on linkedin do something to put your brand and, and your pharmacy out there. 
If anyone wants to learn more, um, so this will be available for download at the IPC website. So that's ipcrx.com. Uh, I've also included my direct uh, contact information here, as well as the information for Wayne at Farm Fresh Media, who hosted session number one. Um, any of the questions that came into the chat box, we will respond to personally. So um, I know I didn't get a chance to, to hit them during this presentation because I think I would have gone over my one hour time limit but we will make sure that we respond to each and every one of you um, that posted something in there. So thank you very much for those. All right, so want to make a game plan. Um, I, I talked to a couple people after the first session, and one of the questions I got was, hey, are the sl slides available for me to download and kind of make some bullet points? So um, the answer to that, again, is yes, all of these will be available for download, but I took the liberty of kind of doing it for you or making you a, a one-page takeaway. So you can screenshot this or you can download it. It should be available as well. So this was the one I made for Mark's Pharmacy. So I came up with my own strategy statement. Now I made it sound nice and corporate -y, but you know, I'm gonna help achieve pharmacy goals, driving growth um, by providing first class service. You know, that's my you know, corporate -y strategy statement. I would obviously, I'd, I'd fine tune that for the independent pharmacy world. You know, what sets you apart? Write down those 10 things, make that list. Writing them down helps commit them to memory, and, and the more times you go through that and the more times you discuss it with your team, the more it's ingrained in, in everybody's you know dialogue, and it's top of mind when you start talking to somebody where any of those features would be applicable. Um, so kind of give you a couple um, markets that you can look at. So you got your general practitioners. How do you market to them? Specialty physicians. Can you track information uh, in your system um, based on, you know, their disease states from your oncology, diabetic, the two examples I've used for this, you know, patients over 55. Um, I mentioned that one at the very start. That's one group of services that I'd be pitching, uh, you know, and, and it could be the app too, but it also might be helping with plan selection later on and, you know, you know, more complicated medication regimens, um, patients with children. This is delivery. This is an app. This is, we offer flavoring. So that's one example I, I should have probably thrown in there earlier, but um, these are things that you can market to me. So I have an eight-year-old who doesn't matter how you hide it. He knows there's medication in there somewhere. So, you know, flavoring, that would absolutely appeal to me. I would, I would be interested. Um, I want to look at new patients within the last 12 months, you know, and maybe call them, just thank them for being customer, send them a handwritten card. Um, you know, that means more to a lot of people than a phone call or especially an automated call, but not knocking on automated calls altogether. Um, but run a report in your system. Look at who are the new patients that filled a script for the first time within the 12 months, uh, last 12 months, and just send them a handwritten thank you card. You know, if you freed up you know, we talked about 20 minutes of your time earlier, you know, you can knock out two or three a day of these or, or more, depending on how fast you write, but things like that make a difference. Run reports, who are your most profitable patients, who are your most profitable physicians, what are your most profitable scripts, how do I get more of those patients, how do I work more closely with those physicians, and how do I get them to write more of those scripts for those patients? So just some examples that you can take home. Um, I put five to seven marketing initiatives, and then I threw 10 examples in there. So um, you can uh, pick and choose. I just included a number of them that have been submitted to me prior. So social media engagement, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, mail outs and brochures, um, th those still work extremely well. Um, come up with a process to notify staff of cross education slash selling opportunities. Or if your pharmacy system supports it, come up with a form of automation. So when you have somebody who you've filled, you know, Lasix for, um, you know, recommended potassium supplement, things like that. A lot of pharmacy systems can create automatic notifications at the pharmacist check station at the point of sale that, hey, we need to let this person know that they should be taking or here are the benefits of taking that. So again, move back towards the education, not the selling portion of it. But what is that process? If your system doesn't have ways to do it automatically, you know, we could go back to my post-it notes, for instance, and anybody who gets the following, make this recommendation or send them to speak with the pharmacist or whomever. Um, do med calls. 
So do medication checkups, follow-up calls, ask them if they're feeling better. Um, if you, you know, dispensed a device that you have to teach somebody how to use and how to clean, you know, call them back in seven days and, and see if they're having any trouble with that. Make sure everything's going okay. You know, and while that's you know, a very 20,000 foot example, some of these things are areas that you can get paid for today. So as we move into the clinical and, and MTM and, and groups like CPESN and so forth, you know, they're, they're doing some pretty amazing things that are, are changing the, the game for independent pharmacy today. Um, so uh, add, you know, text to parents about their child. So, you know, 48 hours after my kid gets an antibiotic, I get a text message that says, we're just checking to see if Mark's feeling okay, or I'll use my, my name if Colin's feeling okay. Um, you know, press one if you'd like to speak to somebody. Press two if everything's good. Birthday calls. Um, I, I would have, you know, seven years ago told you that this is never going to fly. Well, the data told me wrong in a number of places. So birthday calls, people love them. Um, now, again, that goes into specific age brackets. So we know that 55 and older do like the birthday calls, but you've got that 30 to 50 demographic where that's actually a potential turn off. They would prefer text messages. So interestingly enough, when you ask those people why, um, the most common response was, oh, the automated calls are just so impersonal. Um, I'd prefer a text message instead. So, you know, I can get a little chuckle at the irony in that, but, you know, I think me recording my voice on a birthday call takes some guts and it's a little bit more personal than an automated text message, but it, it's the perception to the customer is all that matters. So physician engagement, working with your top doctors and finding out services that you can provide to help them. You know, call the doctors and ask, what can I do to help you? And they will in turn, I promise, come up with ways to help you nine times out of 10. Um, emailing campaigns, you know, sticky notes on the computers. If you don't have uh, ways of automating it, you know, I talked about delivery, drive through curbside pickup, get an app. If you don't already have one, um, you should. So have a website, have a place that people can go that when they're in line at CVS and it's been taking way too long and it was not ready when it was promised and they're Googling pharmacies near me, you know, make sure that you're in that list and that you have a website that highlights all the things that, that you do. So we looked at a pharmacy earlier that, you know, that was pop up on their main homepage. Um, but again, app as well. And then having a loyalty program to track all that information, you know, age, date, um, age, I was going to say date of birth, but date of birth, zip code, you know, basic demographics that help pinpoint where do your customers come from? Where do your most profitable customers come from? Where areas should you market more to? Because you should be getting people from there, but for whatever reason, you're not. And then we've got um, the top five to seven underlying beliefs. So just to change it up, I put less on this one. I highlighted the top one because this is important. You know, so this is a 2020 Gardner study that the number of in-store customer interactions will reduce by 20% over the next 12 months. Now, that is, if nothing else, a call for us to maximize on every one of our customer engagements and, and make sure that we take the opportunities that we have to explain to the people, you know, the services that we can provide and, and to the doctors, the same thing. So I mentioned earlier, we've got 30% of a population over 65 in a 20 mile radius. Well, I'd love to have 50% so we can use the data to solve that. And then when you've got population and, and client base limitations, you know, we looked at ways that we can expand out, work with the physicians and so forth. So just a couple takeaways from that that you can print out and hopefully start doing tomorrow. So um, with that, I am right, I think, on time. Um, I want to, once again, thank you, IPC, for organizing this. I hope you all were able to take away some good information from this. If anybody has questions that they didn't submit during the presentation, please, by all means, um, email, call, whatever's the most convenient. I'm more than happy to discuss anything in more in depth. And um, thank you very much for you taking the time out of your night to um, spend an hour with us. And you'll have a fantastic evening. Thank you very much.